Dobar den i hvala vam puno za invitacija. It's a very special honor to speak here in this room where I'm participated in a lot of parliamentary meetings where we women still didn't have a majority, but I think we are on a good way and I'm quite optimistic for your elections in this field. Um, I like to point out 11 main strategies to maximize women's power. Uh, these are so-called lessons learned learn from my own personal experience in the East German women's movement during the transition period but also and especially as a women politician uh, working in the federal parliament and also my experience in working with the women in the region here during the last 10 years. Um, my first point uh, um, is um, maybe also already a reply to uh, Zaida, uh, who pointed out the importance uh, of the uh, grassroots um, level. I think we really, first of all, have always to pay attention to acceptable uh, basic life conditions and daily life standards of women to ensure the basic for women to be on board for any kind of further actions. So uh, I think even if uh, somebody says uh, we can't hear it anymore, the economic independence of each woman is of course the key. Second point is we have to overcome the traditional gender uh, stereotypes. So there is a strong need of a continuous awareness raising. So it means also that we have to argue always on the base of very concrete data and facts concerning women's position. And uh, it's not a surprise, media and the civil society uh, movement organizations, especially the women's organization, of course, play a key role in this process. My third point is we have to enlarge the pool of so-called ambitious women and to take care of them. So, and especially during this period in Serbia, it's uh, of huge importance, of course, the right selection of potential women candidates for different positions is a huge challenge. And um, we should never forget, and not only just in front of any kind of local or federal election, the need of continuous capacity bind uh, building and special trainings. Uh, so, and it's also not uh, a big surprise if we have a strong demand to have a stronger focus on younger women. My first point is the legislative base for gender equality has to be enhanced and first of all implemented. Uh, so the election legislation, you followed that in Serbia during the last months, is a key pillar uh, for guaranteeing a better presentation of women in decision-making bodies. So uh, the focus has to be of course on gender equality legislation, but also on gender mainstreaming of any kind of reform. Uh, so also we have to have in mind always the different forms of affirmative action. My fifth point is the existing mechanisms and institutions pushing gender equality have to be used. This means institutional structures as gender focal points, equal opportunity committees, at governmental as well as at local level, or the use of quota for decision-making bodies, as well as the use as any kind of uh, offer for gender trainings. My sixth point is uh, to come out of, I would call it, ghettoization of women politics uh, means for me uh, the gender mainstreaming approach has to be implemented in all political fields and areas and levels of work. This means to integrate always the women's perspective, and this means in bracket not only in the Committee on Gender Equality or in social politics. Uh, so the development of very clear and concrete guidelines and measures uh, is necessary. What has to be recognized from a gender perspective? And if our aim is uh, gender sensitivity of all proposed plans, programs and laws, there is always a strong need to explain the so-called added value of inclusion of gender perspective. My seventh point, we have to take care on the establishment of women's structures. 
And this means not only in a formal way, uh, because we don't need them as alibi uh, to have a better assessment in the next, for example, EU progress report. Uh, there is a need of special women's committees and caucuses uh, at the level of parties, across party lines, at national, regional, as well as local level. But they should create on the base of uh, the reached, concrete reached agreements on a minimum uh, set of basic points and on the base of consensus on priority issues to deal with. And this means not to have too much uh, on the agenda which can't be fulfilled. My eight points is sustainable links among women's organizations have to be built. Uh, of course, uh, everybody is speaking about networking, but networking is a key issue. Uh, and we have to take special attention on on the interaction between women acting at live, uh, different levels, like uh, politicians and civil society, women working at national uh, or local level. So the main aim is uh, to have common actions and to create really working links among them, uh, and sometimes also to create links between different communities. And here I have to add, we don't have to have any illusion uh, concerning the existing competition uh, especially also between uh, the NGO uh, in, inside the NGO sector. My ninth point is we always have to t uh, have a look to partners to implement our demands uh, as these is uh, political decision makers, for example, to push a concrete law or initiative the activists of the civil society organizations, of course, to get a wider circle of mobilized people, but not to forget the men because they are our partners in life and work, and unfortunately they are still the majority in most of the decision-making bodies, but not to forget the media concerning the necessary awareness raising. My tenth point is we have always to use and to quote the existing ratified international uh, commitments uh, more frequently and intensively. Uh, this is the same as we should do with the Constitution and the gender equality law. I only like to mention CEDAW, the Millennium Development Goals, the EU, strong EU commitments on gender equality, and here I'm optimistic that the push for coming from the EU will be a strong one in the future, even for a country like Germany. Uh, we have now the debate on 30 percentage quota uh, in, in, in uh, the top leadership, and it's, it's a, a huge debate even in, in, in Germany. Uh, it doesn't mean that I come in this way from a paradise country, but I'm also very happy that um, I think Natasha already mentioned the UN and uh, United Nations Security Resolution uh, 1325 on Women, Peace and Security, and that we have a, a debate also on the panel uh, this afternoon. And my last point is uh, the diversity and the different forms of our engagement have always to be respected. It means whether are women engaged in grassroots works, uh, uh, in established institutions, in the parliament, in uh, yeah, visible protest actions, in writing shadow reports, in creating a practical dialogue. We have to recognize that they have a common approach, and this means to improve the existing structures and to overcome uh, the still existing